today we hear a lot of talk about make in India, especially in the defense sector. But one of the companies that can take pride in the private sector to pioneer the way for make in India initiatives was Bharat Forge that set up its Kalyani strategic systems here in Pune by bringing together this entire set of manufacturing apparatus and all the technology that is required for India to become a top-notch barrel manufacturing country. This was done by buying this plant from Ruag in Switzerland and bringing the plant lock, stock and barrel to India and then fine-tuning it and making it so efficient that today they can say with some pride that their rate of manufacturing barrels is almost close to one barrel a day, which is quite phenomenal. And in due course of time, we will show you how these barrels are manufactured, what technology is employed, and what precision goes into making the most crucial element of any artillery gun systems and even tank gun systems. As India celebrated 75 years of its independence, for the first time ever, an Indian-made artillery gun, the Advanced Toad Artillery Gun ATAX, designed and produced by DRDO and Bharat Forge together, was used to deliver the ceremonial 21-gun salute to the national flag during the Independence Day ceremony, where at Red Fort in Delhi, Prime Minister Narendra Modi hoisted the national flag. In 2012, when we started the whole idea of making an artillery gun, we didn't have a plant, so we needed a plant uh, to manufacture an artillery gun. The main components of an artillery gun is, is the ordnance, what we call as the gun barrel, the breech, the recoil system, that is the main part, and that is where the technology of an artillery gun lies. It doesn't lie in the structure. And therefore, we needed to get a plant that is capable of making the 155 millimeter 52 caliber barrels, the breech for it, and the recoil system for it. And we were, me and Colonel Bhatia were traveling in the UK and uh, meeting with some universities. So, Cranfield University had uh, uh, the entire setup of uh, British MOD's R&D was then located in Cranfield University and we went and met the people who were involved in uh, the artillery design and production of the British R&Ds, equivalent of our DRDO out in, in England. And uh, that gentleman who was the head of that gave us an information that there is a plant available for sale in Switzerland that belongs to Rheinmetall, Ruag. Next day I was in Zurich, I drove down to this small little place where this plant was located and this plant was largely set up for the Middle East war to deal with all the ordnance required for the guns that were being used by the NATO forces and the US forces in the Middle East war because guns, the ordnances always need to be refurbished especially used in sand and desert conditions and this plant was available for sale. I went around, I looked at it, I did the inspection myself and before lunch time I made a decision to buy it. Two days later my engineers were there, one week later the plant was getting dismantled. Before that we had to get permissions from the Swiss government, the German government because this was uh, uh, military technology and military technologies require government approval, they were able to get it in less than a week for that. And then we uprooted the plant, bought it here, and this is where, where it is. It was a very modern plant, completely CNC controlled, uh, with the system of auto frittage, which is very important for barrels, that gives it the properties of fatigue and life for a barrel. And that's how we started making barrels, breech, recoil, and we made the whole gun. Bharat Forge is part of the Pune-based Kalyani Group, a leading global full-service supplier of forged and machine engine and chassis components. 
with end-to-end -end capability and manufacturing footprints across India, Germany, Sweden and China. The Kalyani Group was established in 1961 and is now a market leader in all its respective business segments and the fifth largest forging company in the world. And the Kalyani Group is also the largest exporter of forging from India, making Bharat Forge also the leading engineering steel manufacturer in India. One of the things we realized also at that time that if you really want a true Make in India product, you need to have the intellectual property of how to make the ordnance. Because if you don't know how to make the ordnance, there is what is there in a gun? You have to be able to make the barrel, the breech, from where the you know shells are fired. And we realized that pretty pretty much upfront in 2012. And this is why we got this plant, and now we have complete intellectual property of how to make this completely in India. We don't need anybody's help to do it. Everybody has their own intellectual properties. We have developed the ordnance from our own steel, forge it ourselves, heat treat it ourselves, and machine it ourselves, auto fertage it ourselves, rifle it ourselves. So all these things require something like almost 50, 60 operations. All have technology inbuilt into them. And we have developed all this on our own. One barrel per day. So we can make 300 barrels a, a year. The world's largest capacity to make barrels. And the advantage of having this know-how and know-why here and your IP is tomorrow we want to make a 55 caliber barrel or a 58 caliber barrel which will give you a much better range. We can do this all by ourselves. The forging business worldwide is not a very big business. But the art of forging metal is a tradition at Bharat Forge and their products are built with the necessary expertise to accommodate various industries. Giving the highest priority to the defense sector, Bharat Forge is one of the few companies that has tried to make Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Make in India campaign part of its DNA. Challenging the long-standing conventions and defying set limitations, the Kalyani Group has focused on areas like artillery systems, protected vehicles, armored vehicles upgrade, ammunition, missiles, air defense solutions, small arms, defense electronics, and even aerospace. Technology and innovation are the cornerstones of the Kalyani Group's offerings in the defense sector with tangible efforts on developing indigenous products for the armed forces in India and for those across the globe. For some years now, we have been hearing of the need to make in India weapon systems and platforms that will decrease India's dependence on importing weapon systems from abroad. And here is one example behind me of the artillery systems that are being made in Pune by Bharat Forge, which includes a gun, the ATAGS, which is superior, say for instance, to the Bofors gun, or well behind me, uh, Indian equivalent of the M777 artillery platforms that have been bought from abroad. And why they are superior, apart from them being technologically competitive, is also because they are cost effective, they offer more range and more capabilities to the same gun systems that were earlier the strong platform that were used by the Indian Army, say for instance, in the Kargil conflict. But today, India's industry, on the encouragement of the Ministry of Defense, is preparing for wars for the future. And this platform behind me is your classic example of preparing for the platforms for the future. The advanced stored artillery gun systems 
or ATAX that Bharat Forge developed with DRDO is touted to be the most modern artillery weapon system in its category. The ATAX artillery guns are 95% indigenous, thus making it the true embodiment of Make in India for the world. The entire weapon system was developed and proof tested in a record period of less than two years. The government showcased this future battlefield system in Republic Day Parade in January 2016. One of the unique features of this gun platform is its ability to travel in hills and mountains. In fact, this platform was taken to the heights of almost 17,000 feet in the northeastern part of India. And this has all been done by a unique technology, which in fact has been patented by our group, wherein we have brought the capability of a forward towing. Now, one advantage of forward towing is that the prime mover can move and then gun can continue to follow. Almost all towed guns in the world are towed from back. But here is a gun which is towed from front. The second thing which we brought in this technology was a artificial intelligence which is built in which dictates the rear wheels to take the same angle as the front wheels to ensure very sharp turns. So whereas a normal gun would have a turning radius of something like 25 to 30 meters, this gun has a turning radius of less than 18.5 meters. Wow. And with this capability, we were able to, you know, negotiate all hairpin bends in northeastern India and also take it up to 18,000 feet without any problem. And no gun in the world has ever done this. When the initial guns came, they came with a very small engine, which was only meant to do basic activity of moving a 100 meter here, 200 meters here. But when the advanced towed artillery gun system was being planned, the thought process was that it should be self-propelled to a certain extent. Of course, it cannot go very long distances, but on a good road, it can achieve speeds of 40-50 kilometers on its own. It's got the capacity to travel in desert on its own. It can do almost 14 kilometers in one hour in the dunes. So it has got tremendous amount of mobility. Add to it the second great thing required in artillery is the firepower. And this gun platform has the capability to fire from zone 1 to zone 7. Which Most of the guns in the world market only fire from zone 2 to zone 6. So here you can get the minimum range and the maximum range in the same platform. The Garuda 105-V2 is the 105mm 37 caliber mobile weapon system with 360 degrees firing capability. An ultra light weight gun system weighing under 5.5 ton created with state of the art hybrid recoil technology possesses all terrain maneuverability including in high altitude areas. It is a go anywhere gun that comes with a shoot and scoot capability, low maintenance cost and is adaptable for fitting into any service vehicle. It also underwent army trials in high altitude areas and the Defence Ministry has announced that they will be procuring these gun systems. But another item that the Indian Army is focusing on is the new armoured vehicle fleet, the Kalyani M4, a multi-role, highly dynamic, mine-protected armoured vehicle. Designed predominantly as an extraction and occupant protection vehicle, Kalyani's M4 design offers high speed and quick maneuverability. It has a maximum payload of 2.3 tons and can carry up to 8 people. With the weight of its armor, the M4 weighs 16 tons. Its 43 degree approach and 44 degree departure angle with high water wading depth of 900 mm makes it ideal for tough terrain or fording rivers. The indigenously developed Kalyani M4 would be used for transporting troops at high altitudes in harsh climatic regions by the Indian Army also. 
The Kalyani M4 uses a turbocharged six-port diesel motor, which is rated to deliver 465 HP and a whooping 1627 Nm of torque. It uses a CVT automatic transmission, but it also features a low-range gearbox to work with the 4 into 4 system to help scale difficult steep inclines. The M4 maxes out at 140 km per hour and its fuel tank is large enough to help it cover a range of up to 800 km. This ammunition has hitherto Ford has always been imported, either from Russian origin or from some of the companies in Western countries or Israel for that matter. The critical technologies in this lie in the two, three parts. One of course is the penetrator. Now this penetrator has to have a very high density to ensure that you can get penetration. For a tank battle, this ammunition is critical because this will decide whether you are able to survive against the enemy or not. The second part is its penetration capability and it must have a penetration, today's requirement is in excess of 530 millimeter. Of course, we are working on 600 millimeter penetration also. The third part is that the weapon must be accurate and must get fin stabilization to not have too much wobbling and must be accurate in hitting. So there are crit critical technologies which come, one is on the penetration. Now this is made with tungsten. Now tungsten requires very high level of machining because this is almost 17.6 density which you can imagine steel will be less than half of that density. The second critical part in this is the fin. The fin stabilization and in between is the discarding sample. Now all this requires that you should have very very precise machining capability and also have the knowledge and the metallurgy to do this. Led by its primary R&D centers, Kalyani Center for Technology and Innovation, KCTI, and the Kalyani Center for Manufacturing Innovation, KCMI, the company continues to lay strong emphasis on research and innovation. It has solid manufacturing capabilities with six factories in India, four in Europe, and two in North America. 50, 60 uh, M Tech from IIT Bombay, who are our core competency, who are our strength, and we have also taken people from PhD and higher, higher qualification from various universities in India and abroad. We have also created PhDs from here, giving guidance from here. This is a rare center where DSIR has not done one audit, and they trust this center so much because we send our report and they find that every year we are doing so many new technology developments and so many new uh, successes we are achieving. The center is having very high class testing and characterization lab. So in the field of metallurgy and materials, uh, you can say we are one of the best. We publish international papers. We have more than 75 patents of the company. Before the center, there was one patent. And out of the 75 patents, majority of patents have come up from research being done from this center. So this center is having all the labs for characterization and testing, special testing like creep, fracture, fatigue, corrosion, fatigue, corrosion, stress corrosion, cracking, so many very sophisticated technologies which very few people are having in India. If any further proof is needed of India's engineering and technological prowess in the space of producing equipment 
which will clearly fall in the make in India genre. We have with us here the Bharat 155 weapon platform that has been made by Bharat Forge and blow by blow and in every other dimension it is superior to the weapon platforms of similar category that have been imported by India. For instance, they are lighter in weight, they provide you better technological efficacy and better range and better mobility and in the long run they provide you the assurance of not just weapon systems but the ammunition that India would need in any future engagement with its adversary because the supplies of ammunition and the weapons platform will come from these factories of Bharat Forge in Pune.